Talks with stars, we'll talk about code or whatever we'll talk about today. It's about two stars, so please hang tight while I check that everything is okay. Sound check, camera check, lights check. How's my hair? Oh, wait, I don't have any hair. Maybe put some pants on and I am good to go. So get ready wherever you are Cause this stream is about to start Get ready wherever you are Cause this stream is about to start Hello, everyone, and welcome to another meeting of the C++ Digital Signal Processing Juice and plenty of other things study group. And I'm very happy to welcome today Fotis. Hello, Fotis. Hey. And Bo. Hello, Bo. Hey. hey. And Siwit. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Yeah, awesome to have you all here. Let's double check since I have the new camera and the new setup that we are getting levels here in OBS. You here on YouTube should be able to see and to hear us well. But help me troubleshoot the setup if necessary. All right, so let's get the ball rolling. Do you have like something pressing, like bubbling in your hearts and you need to share? Who wants to go first? See you it. Ah, okay. See <laughs> <laughs> can do it. Okay, are you sure? Okay. Just hold on a second because I, I'm gonna show something special for today, and I need to um, set up Droid Cam. <clears throat> One sec, start. IP is ready. Oh, okay. Now I'm gonna switch inputs, so you should be able to see my my phone's camera. Just a sec. Oops, I placed it upside down. <clears throat> so what is Droid Cam? Is that a thing that allows you to use the camera on the phone as a webcam? As a web to, uh, Droid Cam 2, it's gonna look blurry. Uh, and Okay. So do you see it? Oh, no. Oops. Okay, now do you see it? Or do, you, do I have to disconnect and start again? Oh, oh, I found it. We, we, we see it, early. yeah. We see what looks like a mixing so desk. Do you know what this thing? Yep, it is a mixing desk. Um, now let's go to Reaper. I don't know if I can, oh, can I share my screen? Yes, mm -hmm. I can share my screen and my sound and you will be able to see my uh, my Reaper and my little thingy here at the same time. Correct. So you see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. We this see Reaper, Reaper and okay. on the upper left corner, yes. we see your camera. Yep. Awesome. Now, <clears throat> first things first, I have to remember what I turned off. <laughs> Whoopsie. I turned it off as a safety feature. Now I forgot what I turned off in the first place. Um, one sec, cable is seen, the mixer is doing things. Oh, oh, there we go. It's the master. I have to turn up the master. All right. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out, guys. Just please wait. <clears throat> we can see that it is bubbling okay, the... in your heart. Yeah, it is. Yes. <laughs> It was working. Oh, okay. It's working here. Now Reaper is not. Oh, no, it's it does. Okay. So let's go. 
Are you following Maybe the news? Reaper the... 7 is in the oven. I know that we don't talk about the Fight yeah. Club, but yeah, <laughs> things are happening. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I saw the release candidate I haven't installed yet. Now, why are you getting... Oh, maybe it's getting confused. Now I'm going to use uh, Wave Out. Oh, yeah, it's it's things that it's taking uh, output input from the microphone. No, you should take from my... Uh, yes. Uh, the go. joys of being an audio engineer. Is there mm -hmm. any Reaper 7 feature that you are looking forward to? I don't know what is coming. Uh. No, me neither. I want to be unspoiled. Ah. Yeah, that's that's not very typical of me, I know. Yeah, but, uh, I, I would think that you would be trying out all the release candidates and betas <laughs> and stuff. Is there yeah. Reaper 7 coming out? No way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, you probably Apparently, have noticed that yeah. the updates haven't been as frequent as they usually are recently, and that's because mm. they are they are updating Reaper. An update came out today or yesterday, but mm. they are also working on Reaper 7. Oh, God. Apparently, I'm not able to share this thing with you. Oh, wait. What if I use this instead? Because I can see on my sound card, if you see right here, this... Uh, do you see that orange... LED, it's getting sound. It's just that Reaper cannot get it. And my mixer is bubbling in its heart. Ah, oh, God. Don't you just love I'm audio just devices? still having the Reaper 6.40 something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, don't blame me, guys. Oh, wait, I have uh, another idea. Do you have a reason to not upgrade or you just don't have a reason to upgrade? <laughs> I just not using it. Ah, fair enough. I'm going to use Woosik. Uh, Woosik has made a plugin called Woosik Audio Connect. Let's use the mono because I need the mono input. Or wait, no, I need the stereo. Do you guys hear me? Yes, we continue. Okay, yes. We continue I'm afraid that I... Yes. Okay. So let's see. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Wusik. Everybody, I, please support Wusik. I recognize this in fact, interface. I, Isn't told... that, aren't these the default widgets in Juice? Juice? Yes. <laughs> yes. But still, uh, William has made a great... A great job, and I highly recommend his stuff. I actually invited him to uh, our study group. Nice. He posted on Discord once, but uh, then he disappeared from Discord. But he's still around on Facebook, so I got to rope him back in. So you should be able to hear some static very faintly. Do you hear it? I hear noises. <laughs> yes, there is a noise. Cool. Um, first, let's put a compressor so we d I don't deafen you guys. I'm going to use to come blue compressor. With a hard knee, it should be good. Now, let's go back to this baby right here. So this is a Behringer mixer. Yes, I know the drama that has been unfolding with uh, Ben Jordan and Behringer, but we're not here to discuss that. Here Ooh, there, there's drama going on? I'm technique. out of the loop. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's been going on for a year, but now it has ex escalated. Oh, wow. So Give me I the keywords again. I need to, I'm need. i going to look before. up the drama. <laughs> ben Jordan, Behringer. Okay. Ben Jordan and Behringer, yeah. Carry on. So, do you hear this booming? Boom. Yes. I'm good. So, this technique is called no input mixing. Um, the name is a bit um, misleading because actually there is an input, but it's not an external input. So, let me show you. So, these are the outputs and the inputs. And these are the outputs that are coming to my audio interface. And this is an RCA input, and I'm feeding it 
the phones, the headphones output. So essentially, I'm creating a feedback <laughs> loop. So yeah, you may be wondering, aren't feedback loops dangerous? Yes, but in this case, uh, the only problem that may happen is if you turn on the phantom power, and this mixer doesn't even have one, so it should be good. What now, would happen if you turned on uh, phantom power? On. I know this. It would blow up. <laughs> Simple as that. Now, I'm gonna go closer to the mixer. I'm gonna, uh, please bear with me, I gotta find the, the settings I liked the previous time. So we have a, a gain, high, mid, and low. I'm setting it to phono right now. So this is where the magic happens. I need to turn up the master in such a way that I forgot to be. There we go. So you are hearing a pulsing. And this is the most basic patch. Um, you can do lots of other crazy stuff with it, like you can patch even more inputs to outputs to create even more feedback loops, but I'm scared to do it. But uh, the funny thing is that the equalizer works with this. So I plan to record these sounds that my mixer makes because Sorry. If we find the correct balance between win all those knobs. Now I'm cutting off the lows. Now I'm running it hot on the input. And now I have a crossfader between the second and the third. Uh, if I do. Um, I was thinking if I do two different feedback loops, I could crossfade between the two. So the idea here is that I'm using the, the mixer as a synth, and I can't figure it out now, but uh, five minutes ago when I tested it, I did some cool sounds. But now with my junky setup, I guess it's going to take a little bit of work. But anyway, you're getting the gist, you're getting what I'm trying to do here. And uh, the trick is to go slightly lower. There we go. And now you can do the equalizer to do some cool synth like filters. And then I'm going to record this straight up to Reaper. Let's do it now. Um, no, it's not recording. Oops. Just add a kick and you're done. Yeah, kick and exactly. Vocals. There you go. Um, you should be should be able to monitor it though, because that's gonna create a different kind of feedback loop. There you go. It's recording. So let's jam. <laughs> and you're seeing in real time what I'm doing. Boom boom. So anybody wanna dance to this? You're saying that there now is I'm an input, but it comes from thing. inside the board. What is the input then? It's the phones. The headphones are output jack. Mm. And because it's a feedback loop, it, we are just essentially starting with noise from the components? Yep. Ah, okay. And it's interesting that uh, it even has a BPM finder, and apparently it can count the BPM 160. I don't know if that's relevant, if it's just a, a bug. Did you get this mixer, mixer for this, um, to play around with this, or do you already have it? No, I uh, actually had this. I had this one for a while, a few, many years, and I never used it. In fact, this is the very first time I turned it on and I had it in my basement for like a decade. Yeah. <laughs> I only had to lend it once to a friend so they could do a DJ party, but I never really used it myself until now. And yes, oh. uh, two of the knobs are missing. What but else yeah. do you have? And I'm gonna do a final trick. 
<laughs> um, that's the story for the next episode. <laughs> anyway, now let's fade out. Oh, we're still getting some buzzing. Because I turned off the master, but I still I'm still getting some feedback. But I like this noise, I'm gonna keep it as well. Anyway, so that was the thing I wanted to show. <laughs> That's all I have for you today. Because I wanted to break out from the HISC and computers and stuff and have uh, fun with an actual synth. <laughs> no. I think it's, the thing uh, is, what, what, were you wondering what, what else was in the basement? Maybe there is <laughs> some more fancy stuff, like old synths or whatever, I don't know. Um, not it, for the time being, I think I only have a couple of uh, guitar hero guitars and drums. Ah, that's cool. But uh, yeah, I my brother actually did a method to use the guitar hero drums on a PC. You need that little thingy, that Xbox 360 converter that uh, plugs into your USB cable and emits an infrared, I think. Anyway, it connects to your Guitar Hero drums wirelessly and you can record MIDI notes from the Guitar Hero drums to your DAW. That's good. Yeah, I don't have this thingy right now, or other the, the, the um, sorry, the adapter. Otherwise, I would have shown you cool ways to use the uh, Guitar Hero guitar. Anyway, and these are the RCA cables. I used those gold plated cables because I wanted to keep things safe. <laughs> and I only used an RCA to 1.4 mono. So uh, I could, I haven't tried this in stereo, the mixer, I think. I mean, I mean uh, next time I'm gonna try both of the inputs and outputs because my interface has two inputs, the mixer has two outputs. Etc. Etc. Now, um, what else? Sorry, my cables are a bit. All right. So this was my update for today, and next time I promise I'm gonna go back to VSTs. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Uh, cool. Uh, Leandro, your ca uh, your camera seems to be frozen. Oh, okay. It's going very jankily i don't know yeah that is that is weird on my on my side i see okay. myself moving so maybe it's skype but i can still see you moving so weird um oh yeah well i guess one thing i can do is stop and restart the video maybe that helps anyway uh okay all right so Fatis, i'll ask you Sorry, to do well, something tell me you guys Yes. I'll ask you to do one thing, if you haven't already, because I want to play uh -huh. the game, the modular synth game. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I thought mm -hmm. about the challenge that we faced last time, and I have an idea, but I'm not super sure that it's mm -hmm. going to work. But the thing that I, wanna, I wanted you to do is to find the stage that we left off so that we could pick up from, from where we left off mm -hmm. and then work our yeah, way up to that can. challenge again, because then I think we will have the knowledge when we get mm -hmm. there. I think we saved our progress, I think. Yeah, but the last time we didn't remember in which stage we stopped. So that's what I'm oh, asking yeah. you. If you could yeah, maybe even go to the stream again, and, yes. and see where we stopped and mm -hmm. we can go from there. But we I'm can do that exactly last. Exactly that. Because Seawitz has things for us. Yeah, because Seawitz has stuff. Sounds good, yes. Yes. And I want to oh. hear from Seawitz. And you're still sharing your screen. I don't know if I can pause your screen sharing. I don't think I can. Oopsie, yes. I think it has to oh, be no. you. That's me. Like, boom. I did. I stopped it. Yeah, I cannot remove the screen share. Yeah, I just stopped it. Okay. Sorry. All right. It was my. It was online. Okay, done. Let's go back to the screen. 
so you guys liked that thing? <laughs> you didn't tell me. The mixer thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was probably you who mentioned this before, because I saw a YouTube video teaching yeah. how to do this. And it sounds like the kind mm. of thing that you would recommend. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like yeah, it. I plan to turn. I plan to turn these recordings into a sample library, but I'm gonna tweak them with my with my in-house effects, including that JS effect that we have made together, so, and and the turbo synth thingy that I showed last time on oh. Mac OS Nine. <laughs> you are putting. So yeah, I'm gonna use everything. You're gonna use. Uh feedback loop in a mixer and put that into a software that is what 20 plus years old 30 years old yeah 30 years yeah mm, that is very fortis i like that i approve that of very fortis, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right I'm not getting these sounds anywhere else i'm going i'm running through the turn see which take it away yes Okay, uh, so to, to, to be honest, I still did nothing on my project this for how, how much it is right now, one month, maybe something around. But I did something, I'm doing something of my project, a uh, li little story like before. On my work, uh, uh, we're manufacturing some products and we have to send them to the customers and sometimes it is small box boxes with different products and sometimes it is a big pallets uh, stuffed with uh, a lot of products uh, and and the problem about that is that it sometimes it's very difficult to figure out in what order place all those products inside those pellets because size of boxes isn't regular and very different and we have many of those and sometimes you have to um, like your putting something together, then you understand that it's not gonna work. There is a lot of free spaces around that pallet and et cetera, et cetera. You have to start again and again until you figure out the best way to put all the things together. So I thought that it might be a good idea to write some kind of application that could help you to figure out how to put everything together and utilize as much space as you can. So I'm mm -hmm. working on it right now. I just started a couple days ago, maybe a week ago, I, I, I don't know. And if you want, I can show you what, what I've achieved. Sure. Sure. Uh, Isn't that related to like a classic NP complete problem, the next act problem? What what are those? The well, there is a problem in computer science of trying to pack things in an optimal way, and that's an example of a difficult problem to compute. It's NP complete. I'll do some googling here to see if I remember right. So theoretically, it is impossible to do things like this. No, it's just computationally intensive to find the optimal optimal solution. There are always opt appro approximations. No, of course, it shouldn't be like totally optimal and totally one hundred percent use of space. There could be some gaps left, but. Uh, you don't will not have to think about how you should put those boxes together and and, and stuff like that and try a couple times before you find the best way like that was the main idea yeah fair enough and i do remember right there is no non polygon polynomial algorithm um to find the optimal solution so 
it is a co-NP complete problem for those in the audience who like their algorithm complexity. Anyway, moving on. So I choose another pretty complicated topic here. Well, it I... is a known problem. So in a sense, it's a difficult problem, but many people have already thought about it and there are some good, good enough solutions anyway. I know that there is uh, some kind of AutoCAD and CAD programs that can do this, but uh, when you're working with the things, you can't like every time run to your PC and check the things and positioning. It's better to have on your phone on, or on your tablet such an application. and. I didn't check a lot, but I didn't find good application for that in like Google Play or whatever, yeah? So yeah, but the thing is, other thing is that I'm doing this on my phone. So yeah, I'm doing all the programming in, in on the phone. I have here the, how it is called, PyDroid 3. Yeah, it's a free application. And oh, you're not sharing your screen. I what? I I press the share screen. Your. Uh, didn't you want to share the screen of your phone? Or yes. Like you did. Share. Yeah, we can see it. I pressed share screen. Can you see? Mm, no, it we don't see that. But can you like stop and restart? No. I know, such a computer scientist uh, answer, but it always <laughs> works. What can we do? Yeah. It, it, it was working a couple minutes ago. <laughs> that's exactly what happened to me with the no input mixer. And but that's also a very oh, computer scientist thing to say. <laughs> Worked on my machine, worked five minutes ago, <laughs> but we, it is working now, yeah. <laughs> so carry on. So I have PyDroid here <clears throat> and a uh, little bit learning oh, Py Python nice. as well. And what I've achieved right now is it like this will be the main screen, where is the yellow, that, that, that thing. Mm -hmm. And there will be a couple fields like this is test test data doesn't mean anything here. Yeah. You can add whatever you want here. Oops, sorry. Wrong button. And this will appear th there in the bottom, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. actually chat chat GPT very helpful very helping a lot for me with this application because that's I a very computer Python. scientist thing to say <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know Python I don't know QML yeah but ChatGPT knows what is QML Uh, we can hear you. So wait. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Here you go. Uh, oh. <laughs> if you remember, guys, once I was showing you one year ago, maybe the my experiments with the QT, QML, and C++ regarding mm -hmm. to my application and Q, so QML is a sub language of JavaScript. Oh, of the Qt. Oh, okay. So it looks like you're seeing right now. So there is some some conditionals you can do and and, and and things. I don't know. So basically this is the language for programming <laughs> with visual interfaces. 
I see. Are you writing? <laughs> I just read something you wrote. <laughs> no, no. I'm... The What? title. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't focus on the title. <laughs> so this this is a family-friendly okay. stream, you guys. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> I can show you this. This is better. Okay. Uh, my question is, are you typing in all this code on the phone? Please tell me that you're not doing that. Yes, I'm doing that. Oh, oh no, whoa. that oh sounds awful. <laughs> That's on <a> next level. <laughs> That's what, what a mobile scientist would say. <laughs> Dude. But basically, Congrats, man. The, the <laughs> I wouldn't be able to handle this. While the CNC is milling the products, I have some spare time, like two, three, five minutes, oh. yes, before while machine is working and I have some time to write the code. I see. Do you have an Sweet. external keyboard or are you using the on screen keyboard? Uh, yes, I have, but I didn't take it to work. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> But oh my God! You are a hero. Even more amazing as it goes on. <laughs> Till now, I was. You deserve a medal, man. Only the the this keyboard. The commitment. Type. Oh my God! <laughs> And the chat GPT as well. You even put They comments in there. Text. Holy cow! I'm doing a lot of copy paste. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> But even copying and pasting is uh, annoying on a phone, it, at least for me. I agree. Mm. Jesus so, Christ, man. So basically, behind all that, there is some uh, SQL Lite database where you can store all the box types, all the products, yeah, like. As you he see here, this is all the data from the, the de database and you can add and manage that. And I will add like uh, products as well later. And then you just pick what product, how much you have of it and write, write down what the sizes of the box you have to pack in that product and I hope it will calculate everything for you. Sounds cool. I have a question. Yes. Why did you decide to Why? do a native app? Because I suppose for the kind of app that you're doing, a web app would perhaps be easier to develop. So I am interested in knowing why go native. Mm. Uh, because, to be honest, I don't know, uh, but <laughs> thinking about this, where to store, for example, the database, mm. because SQLite 3 storing this database in the same folder where the app is located, at least right now, yeah? Mm -hmm. like, open public and the, he, there he is, there it is, yeah. But in the case of the web application, I need to have some kind of server or uh, what, whatever. And then you need connect. connectivity, fair enough, It's fair enough. more complicated infrastructure than just to have the phone application. Mm, that makes sense. Interesting point. Don't you just love SQLite? I think it's the best database ever. I use it everywhere. <laughs> And it is true that you could you could do some things in the browser, like local storage and stuff, but you are right. That does make sense. All right, fascinating stuff. How does this even work if you wanted to install this app in another phone? Is there a way for you to compile it so it becomes an APK or... Do you have to install this Python interpreter and then share your program? Uh, I hope that there is some kind of compilers then that can convert Python code to the APK format and just to, you can just move all the things around. 
without installing interpreter and everything else that QT date library. And I hope I, I don't know. I didn't check yet. I'm just trying to get the application. Got it. And you are not necessarily thinking about sharing this. It's going to solve your problem for you. And that's that, right? Um, I, I'm pretty sure that I will post it on the GitHub. Oh, nice. So uh, why not? Maybe it will help to someone as well. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. And how are you uh, solving the... Single, sorry. <laughs> how are you solving the, the, the problem itself after you input all the dimensions? What is the algorithm you're using to find a good enough solution or an optimal solution? I didn't get that much, uh, obviously, when I get, oh, sorry, I didn't get that far. Okay. When I get there, I will tell you guys, obviously. <laughs> I, so I was saying, uh, if uh, all of us create, most of us have a GitHub account, right? Yeah. Uh, if uh, every single one of us makes a GitHub, we could make like um, one of those group GitHubs, um, where it's like a corporate GitHub, for, but uh, for a study group. You mean like an organization? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Just so we can have a, like a, a GitHub hub, <laughs> even that makes sense. So yeah. we can share projects in there and uh, tweak each other's code. <laughs> that could be fun. Yeah, I think that most of us or all of us are already collaborators in the repository for the study group, the link of which you can find in the description where we keep our notes and links and all of that. So that can already be a hub. But if you want to do an organization instead, then we can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Bo, I think it's yes. your turn. It's my turn. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Oh, by the way, Bo, I, I really loved your new song. The one I uploaded Gee. today. Yep. Oh, cool. So love will find so you. Yeah, that uh, was very chilling in a good way. Oh, who I'm did the female vocals? I'm glad to hear it. Very glad to hear that. Um, yeah, I'm going to start with sharing the computer sound, uh, which I used okay. to uh, who did? Could you tell us who did the female backing vocals? Uh, her name is A. Uh, it starts with an A and ends with an I. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -oh. What? <laughs> what? I see what you're doing yes. there. Jesus Christ! There's uh, there's uh, there's also a guy singing. Uh, so there's my voice. There's another AI dude, and there's an AI girl as well. Oh my God! And that was the first that song got that I far. <laughs> used the uh, AI voices for. So. Uh, guys, I'm gonna throw away my mixer in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead. Send it to see what it's. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm really happy with it. Uh, you, you have to. Uh, uh, the best part is that you don't need to do a, a like a perfect take. You need to sing in the right key, obviously, mm -hmm. the right octave. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, but it, it it really cleans up your bad vocal take, your your bad vocal harmony. So that's great. Mm. So I'm very very pleased with that. Um, what is the AI that you use? It's called. Hang on. So you use the uh, male and female m vocal models on your own voice that's still bow in the backing tracks just filtered through an AI voice? Exactly. Uh, it's called Musicfy. Oh. Oh, okay. 
that's how those AI covers are being done. For example, Frank Sinatra singing, uh, I don't know, Elvis Presley. Lo-fi. Mm. Uh, that Icelandic jazz singer. Uh, oh, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. And, and weird Beatles mm -hmm. versions of, or mm -hmm. Hank Williams singing modern rap, or et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Uh, so it's music fi I think it's dot lol. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're not taking themselves too seriously. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, back to coding. Uh, what from last time I did this, and I've enhanced it a bit. Uh, there's a different code for left and right channel, and the left channel is the correct one. Mm. But I added some functionality, uh, different um, curves for producing the overtones. So we are talking about that plugin that has a crossover separating the low and the high end, and you distort the low end. No. So I skipped that. Oh. Okay, what is I, that? I was going to do that. I think I sort of uh, mentioned that I that was that was an idea that I was going to try, which I did, and it wasn't nowhere near as nice as I thought it would be. Oh. <laughs> um, um, so I just did a low pass filter and and add in the signal. So the uh, and. Um, So there's different curves for creating the distortion, and this, is, and I sort of just add in uh, that distorted uh, minus the original signal, then I add it in, and I've been trying this in a couple of mixes, and it sounds good. <laughs> um, Sweet. I was a bit surprised at the results because if you use it on like a kick or a bass, it sounds really nice. I could. Uh, if I kill the tone generator. Well, sorry, can you get the code back for a second? Yeah, sure, absolutely, certainly. Uh, because if my eyes are correct, there is a uh, where flow equal equal zero in the end of that line, there is a colon, and on the next line, there is a semicolon. It yes. I've done that a couple of times. Huh. Incidentally, in that exact context, context, it doesn't matter. It doesn't? It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. But in that context, it doesn't matter because you have a conditional in that line and you have a conditional on the next that's line. So... so and the conditions are mutually exclusive because you are checking the same variable against different values. So F L A V against zero and against one. So the semicolon mm -hmm. means end of line and start running the next line. And then it will check the next condition. And the column means else. Yeah. But because the, yes. the, the conditions are mutually exclusive, only one of them will be true. So doing else or doing proceed to the next line amounts to the same thing. Ha! <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. But then isn't it should be like on the next line colon as well? Mm, well, you can mix and match there. You can use semicolon or colon on, the, on this line in or the next. Because you're just chaining but, expressions or... Okay. Yes, you're chaining the conditionals or you're having conditionals in series. It doesn't matter. But anyway, I just thought it was interesting to to note that in this line, in this very specific context, it doesn't matter if it's semicolon or column. Both will do the same. The only difference is that if the first condition is met, then with the column, you will not check the second condition and with the semicolon, you will. But they're mutually exclusive, so the output will be the same. I'm going to disagree with you a bit because I was coding prior to the stream and I accidentally typed a colon and it didn't work in in, in this same, same context. 
Oh, really? Yes, I can show you the code. Ah, it would be interesting in seeing that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, may, I may very well be wrong in this, but... Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I may very well be wrong in this as well. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so let me give you an audio example of this. Can you hear it? I cannot. No. No. Computer sound. I'm going to stop sharing for a bit. Confirm. Stop. I can't hear any sound either. No, oh, still I have. Mm. Oh, good. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, was this the one? Yes. But so still not hearing. Can you hear it now? I cannot. No. 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 Maybe you should get Vusic audio connect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what you need there, Bo, is a mixing desk, and then you create a feedback loop, <laughs> a loopback. Oh, yeah. The funny thing um, that is in Windows, uh, Reaper does allow you to create a shared loopback using the Wasapi. So you can actually do it, but you, you can blow up your speakers, but it's possible. <laughs> But I didn't tell you this. <laughs> when I was, I burn no responsibility. Uh, I, when I was coming up with my crazy audio routing setup, one of the things I tried mm -hmm. was literally taking the headphone jack. Sorry, you were taking the headphone jack out of the computer and feeding that into uh -huh. uh, one of the inputs in the sound card to see if oh. I could record the sound coming out of the computer using that instead of using 500 instances of black hole as I do now. And uh -oh. it creates a ground loop and it sounds buzzy. Oh, I'm not surprised. That sounds sexy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a kick and you're there? Yeah. It's minimal techno. Some uh, people have actually created minimal techno with those mixers. You can look it up on YouTube. Yeah. It okay. is perfectly possible. Cool. Uh, should we bother with fixing the sound or? <laughs> well, you I know you, you tell me. It's your computer. Do you think you? Yeah, the th the, it's, it's a PC. Um, That's not an excuse. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to troubleshoot PCs. <laughs> Well, me neither. Yeah, go to the Reaper settings um, on, on the bottom left where it says 96 kilohertz Asia. There you go. So, oh, now it disappeared. Yeah, oh, there you go. One. So we have, yes. Um, click the Asia one, the Asia drop down menu. You can try wave out instead. And check your correct outputs and inputs that you're using. Oh, we, we can hear it. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I need to share. There Are you hearing my microphone or is it the, actually the computer sound? I can both. hear both. We can hear both, yes. Isn't Windows magical? <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, so. that's weird. Now I can't hear you. What the? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, Windows is magical. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't I couldn't hear you for a bit there. But what were you saying? Sorry. Okay. Nothing. We were just goofing around. Yeah, we were Are saying that we could hear both. Can you 
could tell the difference. No, the mic sound is pretty much the same. But there's okay. some extra noise. Uh, 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 so I'm going to do the oh. Delta thing. Mm -hmm. I love it. So this is what is added. And there's a high, uh, low pass field too, adjustable. I like it this way. <laughs> it's a, this is a fuzzy bass sound. Yeah, so you are like blend that blues in. rock. And like I said, I've been using it in a couple of mixes on basses uh, mm. and the uh, kicks. I also tried it on the master bus, but it got a bit overwhelming. Uh, but you never know. Yeah, it sounds very smooth. Yeah, it's a, it's a sort of really nice low end addition that adds overtone and, and a bit and also given that um, the formula or the sort of the, the wave shaping is the way that it is, uh, it also adds a bit of bass, the sort of low bass compression that's really nice, quite musical. So I'm it's happy tightening up the bass. Yes. Sweet. You should and send this to John Paul Jones. Absolutely. I have his email address. I will do that ASAP. Um, mm -hmm. And now for, uh, did, you, did you check uh, Air Windows Sweeten? It's one of his plugins. Yes. Yes, I did. Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured. <laughs> Next question. He, uh, so what he is doing is that oh, sort of old pedal overtone thingy where he's just adding mm. one uh, one octave above. And mm, one harmonic. Yes. Uh, and I decided to somewhat copy that, but I also did the low pass filter on the added signal. I'm uh, gonna change this up a bit. I have no idea what it actually reset. Cycles. So it's adding one overtone, a sort of one octave above, but it's also uh, since it's uh, re halfway rectified, it's it's um, it's only positives. But I low passed it and I also made it so that you can switch it. So this, that it's adding to the uh, bottom half of the wave. And then just for, for the age of it, I added a, a, a more distorted version of it. The issue with this is that it's it has the reverse dynamic. Uh, it's a sort of a reverse compression where um, uh, since the, it, it's squaring the input wave. So uh, in, instead of getting the smooth, nice uh, bass compression is doing the opposite. So it's, it's uh, as it as the increase in velocity, it's, it's get this sort of snappy like distortion. But I'm thinking of adding a uh, envelope follower to remedy that if it works, because I really like the uh, like the last um, plugin I showed you. The, that bass, beha that behavior in the bass is really, really nice. It's really, really nice uh, musical sound. Mm -hmm. So that might be useful. And I've also. Uh, made a weird little side chain thingy that I chose to call Excalibur. And what this mm. is doing is it's <clears throat> taking the input signal, uh, feeding that into a high pass filter. So it's the opposite of the rear. If you remember mm. that thing that fed into a low pass filter as the mm. uh, uh, velocity increased. Uh, this is doing the opposite of that. It's feeding into a high pass filter. So I'm effectively getting a side chain. And, I, and I've made a little uh, crafty little loop here. Can you hear it? 
No. Oh, yeah, I'm mute. I muted it. Hang on, hang on. I, uh, so this should be. Mm -hmm. So if we just take the bass. Sweet dreams are made of this. No. She's a mom and she's looking good. Uh, <laughs> this is without the side chaining. This is with. So it's cutting nice. out the bass, basically. And there's yeah. three different flavors for this. And a low pass thingy. So if I just listen to the delta signal. Oh my God, I love it. I want it, please. I'm gonna start uploading stuff to things to GitHub. I haven't done that. Yes. This is kind of groovy. It is. Anyways, so that's a weird little side chain thingy. Uh, very little code needed to achieve it. And I haven't tried this in a uh, in a mix yet, but I should uh, get going with it ASAP. And now for the code where um, the conditional statement. So oddly enough, this one, like you said, Leandro, um, I, I I mistyped and I made a colon, and it did not work. Well, I guess then my whole explanation was wrong for some reason. Um, well, it, it could actually be my coding as well. But um, let's see. Uh, so this should. Uh, why am I not getting a. No, see, it's not changing the character. So it should be this overtone series. Mm. But if and when it's changing to a semicolon, it works. Let's see. Why isn't it working? Now neither is working. Let's see. Oh, by the way, a new version of Reaper just dropped 6.83. All right. Well, that's so we're you. getting closer. Why am I not getting a signal? Ah, uh, let's skip this. <laughs> uh, oh, is it? Is it? Hang on a bit. Is the is the track muted? It's muted. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there is your problem. Now that was a feedback loop. Yes. Uh, By the way, you know um, how Reaper is adding a subtitle next to every release, or like a Reaper 6.83, blah, 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 and, and then a phrase. And Oh, yeah, that's the, the tagline, yeah. Yeah, the tagline, yes, exactly. So, you know, the new tagline is, Focus. we do these things not because they are easy, but because we thought they were going to be easy. <laughs> and that's pretty much, that pretty much sums up everything we've done in this group. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story of every so, programmer's yeah. life. Yeah. So, so now I can sympathize. Finally, we got some change in the, uh, uh, so I should also have Oh, never mind. Why is it resetting? 
This is weird. Anyways, let's change this to uh, colons and see what happens. I'm still convinced that the, in this case they are equivalent. Yes, they actually work. It was me restarting the computer. Well, there you have it. <laughs> yeah, you were right, Leandro. You were right, as always. Well, not <laughs> always, not always. <laughs> uh, and this is the sort of next thing that I'm working on. Uh, it's a weird kind of wave shaper, smoother wave shaper. Um, might show you next stream if it works out the way I expect it to. Um, let's try sign. Oh, I, at any rate. Um, Yeah, that's it. That's it for me. <laughs> All right, <laughs> then. Oopsie. Uh, the, Leandro. I... Yes? Uh, maybe you can suggest some sources where to start looking for algorithms regarding to my problem. Well, to be honest, I just remembered this problem from my classes about algorithm complexity. Algorithmic complexity. And I don't remember us covering any approximations or any good enough solutions. So I would start Googling and looking things up on the Wikipedia or something, because I, I don't have anything to recommend. OK, no problem. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> All right, so yeah, thanks both for your update. And now I will talk about two things that I worked on. Mm -hmm. The first is the EOE, the project with the Raspberry Pi Pico. Here is the Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi Pico. There are some wires hanging off. Progress has been made. It's now making a sound. It's marvelous. I'll show you the current state of the code. Oh, sweet. And it is in Python. And I will turn on the board. And with that, it may show up. And it did show up. Great. And now, would you like to go up? Thanks. So here, so here is the current state of the code. It is not using the LED on the board anymore. It's actually sending MIDI notes. So that's good. That's progress. And the way that you can send MIDI notes with these libraries that come with the circuit Python thing is very intuitive. I like it a lot. Sorry, I are you trying to sh share the screen? Uh, I did that thing that I do again, where I don't share the screen with you all. People on YouTube was, were seeing it, but not you. There you go. So, very nice library. Okay, guys. Very intuitive. And the way that you send a MIDI note, for instance, is this. So note on, you give it a note, you give it a velocity, and the way that you send note off is this, note off, you give it a note. Very high level, I like it. There is actually a lower level library where you can send just bytes, but there is this abstraction on top of that, which is very handy. Anyhow, there is also a button going on here. So that's the wire that you saw hanging off because the idea is that we will use capacitive buttons. Capacitive buttons are buttons that you just touch. You don't press on the button, just by touching the button, it already uh, detects your presence. It detects the changing, the changing capacitance around the button. And let's see. Uh, what else we have here? So 
the intent of this code that I wrote here is when you press the button, it is going to send a note on, and when you release the button, it's going to send a note off. So, so far, it's not really a wind instrument. It's more like a keyboard at this point. And I don't want to keep sending note ons and note offs. So instead of just checking the state of the button, if it's pressed or not, I'm trying to check if the button has just been pressed. And for that, I keep this the previous stage. This is something that may feel familiar to you from all the JS effects that we write, where we capture the stage before going around in the loop so that we can have a hold of the previous stage. And if the button was not pressed before and it is pressed now, it means that we have just pressed the button, so we send a note on event. Similarly, if the button was pressed but it's not anymore, it means that we just release the button, so we send a MIDI note off. And if you just look at this code naively, you may think, oh, this works. Well, I'll show you. But I will, oh, not on this Reaper instance. Um, this one, yes. So I will have to come here and enable the MIDI device. The EWI, it's enabled, okay. And I will have to lower the volume a whole lot here, as you shall see. Anyway, what is going to happen now is that I'm going to press the button, which in this janky setup is just touching the wire. This will be eventually connected to something metallic and conductive and on, on the body of the iwi, but for the time being, it's just this. I'm going to just tap on this and you will see, if everything works, some MIDI notes coming in. No, oh, there's Vital. Yeah, I'm using Vital as a sound source, but mm -hmm. of course we are interested in the, the MIDI part of it. Yeah, you saw mm -hmm. some, some squares okay. there that is representing MIDI mm -hmm. notes coming in. And here you can see that it yep. is pressing a note, but the reason why I had to lower the volume, as you see, is that we are getting stuck notes and sometimes mm. when I press, you get these bursts of notes. Mm. Isn't that fascinating? Um, <laughs> not really. Do you know what's going on? Uh, yes. I think I'm, I'm I know. Not sure about, I'm not sure about Python, but I'm now regarding to the C and the micro other microcontrollers. So the thing is, while you, when you touching the wire, that while loop not stopping and it keep running again, 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 again. But ah oh, no, you you have the. The, that the was an issues. issue. In the process of getting to the code where it is now, we ran into that issue. We were just checking if the button was pressed, we were sending a MIDI note on. If the button was not pressed, we were sending a MIDI note off. That does not look good because if you... Essentially, the code used to look like this, okay? And the problem here is this while loop is yeah, running yeah. over and over and over, so you press the button and while your finger is in the button, you just keep sending MIDI note ons and that's not what you want. So we fix that by detecting the edges, the transitions, like so. So that is not the issue, but I think I know what the issue is. Do you, okay. do, okay. do you have a okay. guess? Can I tell a couple more guesses? Yeah, what do you think it is? Let's see if we um, agree. Uh, first, first of all, mm, I know about mechanic buttons that there is a problem of bouncing. Bingo! Like, That's what I think it is. I think it's the. I think it's bouncing. Wait, wait, wait a second, please. Uh, there, there is couple techniques to get rid of it, 
get rid of it. For example, placing a capacitor near the button or use some delays in the code to double check the, 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 if button is pressed or not. But can you get back to the code, please? Uh, won't it help if you put the line 22 after the statement, after MIDI dot send? Mm. No? I see what you mean. You want to... Because you're assigning every time, but you don't have to assign every time that, that what value. I see what you mean. And you're proposing that I take this line, put it there like so. And do I put it here as well? Yes. I see what you're going for and I do not think that this will work because I do think that the problem is bouncing. And if the problem is bouncing, then this button dot value will be jumping up and down. So this will not fix it. But well, it doesn't hurt to try. Yeah, maybe it won't help, but just I, I was doing something like this in the C. Maybe it wasn't, it isn't optimal way. Ah, huh, would you look at that? It cool. seems like see was to see was to the rescue. Yeah, <laughs> I can still make it bounce if I touch it lightly. Because the thing about the capacitive button is that it's not super, super precise. If you move your finger close to it, sometimes it's pressed. And when I'm at the edge, it is still bouncing. See? That's because I'm barely touching the button, so it's bouncing still. But it does seem like you are right. The time it takes for this line to run is enough to debounce. That is a clever debouncing mechanism. And I guess we sort of proved that the problem is bouncing. But very clever. I love it. And I love the idea of the capacitor, too. I didn't think about hardware. I thought about software. And as it turns out, there is an Adafruit debouncer. So I, my idea was to just import a library and debounce that way in software. <laughs> And I guess that's what I'm going to do anyway, because I do think that the library will do a better job than just relying on the timing of MIDI send. But I, I love it. Excellent idea. Thank you. <laughs> that's not the idea, that's experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool stuff, cool stuff. All right. So that is update number one. And... The next part of this project is going to be working with the microphone module, or I guess I will try the library for debouncing because I think that that's going to be even better. But then I'm going to work with the microphone and get some analog inputs that correspond to how much you are, how much air you're blowing, which is going to be the fun part where the notes are not just being bah, but they're going to be expressive. So cool stuff. Sorry. Have the <laughs> YouTube stream frozen? I don't know. Has it? Are we getting complaints in the chat? Now I have a dual. I'm, I'm watching the stream. Oh, it seems like it's oh. encoding overloaded. It is dropping frames. It dropped 116 frames. So that's not too good, but it's not terrible either. Hmm. I'm going to check my phone as well. Yeah, my computer seems to be struggling here. Maybe I will, since I'm not using it anymore, I will close this instance of Reaper and I will close Tony and I will See stop. What you're going for and I, do not... I can hear myself from your mm -hmm. phone. So I turned off the Raspberry Pi and I turned mm -hmm. off Tony and I turned off Reaper and I'm hoping for the best. Let's see what OBS has to say. Are you still overloaded? Yeah. I think OBS is trying to tell me that 
it wants to have a two computer setup again. But luckily I have two computers on my desk, so maybe next time I'll do that. All right, so update number two is, I guess I, I will not necessarily show any code for this. Maybe I will, maybe I will. I will share the screen again. So yeah, update number two is just something that I'm doing in Corslar, which is my day job and it has nothing to do with music, but it is an AI. So I thought I would share it because AI seemed to be <laughs> top of mind for us. The yes. issue was that many students when asking questions related to code would, instead of sharing the code, they would share print screen of the code, which in some cases is problematic because you may want to copy and paste that code into a text editor and try some things out to be able to answer the question from the student. Or maybe just you want to copy and paste something to Google it or whatever. Maybe it's an error message that they're sharing and you would like to Google that error message to learn more about it before you answer the student. So we thought about different ways of going about this. And one thing was for sure, we needed to detect that when you upload an image, it is a screenshot of code. And I played around with different ways of doing this. I tried to look at the variance of colors in, ima in the image because supposedly, um, a screenshot of code will have lower variance. It's just a couple colors and something like a picture of a room or a face would have more colors. So I tried that, but it was not very precise. It would get confused with any kind of screenshot. So I thought, what if I train an AI? Let's do some supervised machine learning. <laughs> so what I did was I got a collection of uploads from Corslore. I manually annotated them as screenshots of code or not, and I trained an AI. And it was so easy to do. I loved it. It is, I, I was using a tool called Teachable Machine. Have you heard of this before? No. No? No. Oh, I'm check it out. Oh, it's definitely something that you're going to like because it works with images. And in this case, that's what I was using, but it also works with audio and it is the oh, same awesome. principle. So what you do is you upload your images. In my case, screenshots of code versus not, or you can even mm -hmm. use your webcam and huh, I guess it doesn't like it when I am streaming and stuff. Yeah, there was an Are we back? Uh, yes, we're okay. back. Okay. Yeah, let's not try it live because it seems to break the stream. But you turn on your webcam and uh -huh. you may even show something. Like you can show an Android phone mm -hmm. and you show uh, an I don't know if it would work between an iPhone and an Android, but you can show like your phone and a water bottle and it would be able to distinguish mm. between the two. So you train in the browser, mm. very cool stuff. And you can also export the model. And this becomes a TensorFlow Sweet. model. TensorFlow is a library developed by Google to do machine learning. And machine learning is one field of AI. And it is implemented in C and C++, but there are ways of using it with Python, JavaScript, and other languages. I was using it with JavaScript, and the code to use it is remarkably straightforward. I will show you. And this for sure will make the stream laggy. I can feel mm -hmm. Visual Studio Code eating out the GPU. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shucks. I, last time we tried this, I had a second display with a 4K screen and I thought that that was the issue. If I turned off the display, then the computer would be able to handle the stream. Apparently not. Jeez Louise. <laughs> <laughs> So 
So what you do is you use teachable machine, teachable machines, I guess, to train the model. Mm -hmm. All happens in the browser. It's very cool. And you can export the model. And what gets exported is these three files. And they are not even that big. They are like two megabytes, I think. Yeah. So they're not even that big. And then there is a JavaScript library to use a model using ten TensorFlow. And the entire code that takes an image and feeds it into TensorFlow and then looks at the prediction, this is it. This is all, all there is to it. And soon you will even see it in colors. It will be amazing. So what you have to do is to resize the image to the particular size that is trained in the model. And you have to normalize the pixels. Normally they go from zero to 255. And you have to make sure that they are going between minus one and one. So that feels very familiar because that's what we do with audio samples when we are processing them in JS effects, for instance. And then you just, you instantiate the model by saying where it is and you call predict and it's going to give you an array of predictions for every class that you thought it is going to give you a percentage like i think it has a 70 percent chance of being a screenshot of code 30 percent chance of being something else and that's that look at this it fits in one screen it's amazing and yeah i i did an ai you all all by myself, with my bare hands, <laughs> I did an AI. Sweet. The way that this works internally is super awesome. cool too. It is something called transfer learning. There is an article explaining this theory, which I will link in the description, but essentially it is a model that already exists, that was trained with hundreds and thousands, uh, just a huge amount of images, and it learned characteristics of the images. Like for instance, when there are trees, they are usually l green and there are leaves. And when it's a dog, then there is a nose and it just learned these features. Then you can provide a set of images that is much smaller. In my case, I had, I guess, 2000 images overall and it will extend mm. the knowledge, the core knowledge that it has to these new inputs. And it's going to have a model that is specialized in the task that you ask it. So it's taking this giant model called MobileNet, and it's just like extending it ever so slightly with the new stuff, but it, it can leverage all the knowledge that it already has over like what is the face of a person, for instance, so that when I'm uploading a face of a person, it will say, oh, that's not a screenshot of code. That's the face of a person. I know what that is. So you're just teaching it this, nice. this very small new thing that it needs to know. And the process is called transfer learning and doing it with teachable machines is very straightforward. I liked it a lot. Very nice developer experience. So yeah, with that, that's my update. But Sweet. Fachis, do you nice. know what stage we need to go to in the game? Yes, but before we do, I have something just as interesting to show you guys. So consider this um, Fortis update part two. <laughs> because, sorry guys, I couldn't resist, but uh, I bit the bullet and I installed Reaper 7. Ah, <laughs> this is, you have been this is nerd sniped, my friend. <laughs> yes. Um, so when I was updating Greepak yesterday, I saw a new thingy by Sex. I'm the creator of Ria Spaghetti, uh, which is called Paranormal FX Router. But when I installed it and tried to run it, it told me, nope, you need to have at least version 7 RC in order to run it. It, it This... Um, you can install it with Repack, but you won't be able to run it in uh, version 6.8. So like Ria Spaghetti, this is also done in a DR -im GUI or the Reaper equivalent Ria -im GUI. But this thing actually told me about the new 
features that we have in Reaper 7. So here's a little um, sneak peek. Um, I'm going to show you how this thing works. It's basically the same thing as this. It's a cooler way of showing you the your FX chain. You have your dry wets, your bypasses. But and then we have this parallel effects. Uh, and this is the reason why it wasn't working. So let's load this. So tada! In Reaper 7, you will be able to create parallel effects by right clicking on an effect and choosing run selected effects in parallel with previous effects. And boom, it also updated in uh, Paranormal. But yeah, it, it has been possible to create parallel effects in Reaper, but it was a lot jankier. You had to, to load this mixer plugin by Cocos. And then you had to um, create four channels and you had to route uh, two, inst two outputs from one plugin into the mixer. And then this is how you could make parallel effects. But now you can do it with just a right click and a left click. Also, did you know about this container? No, is this new? Um, yes, it is. Uh, apparently, you can select a plugin or many plugins and click move effects to container. And now you have plugins inside plugins. I love so this. this. I have feature. always wanted it. Yeah. Yeah. Many other DAWs can do it, like Ableton and Bitwig, but this is the first time. Oh boy, save again. So this is the first time that we get this awesome feature in Reaper. And yes, you can also do this here in uh, Paranormal. You can click and close all into container. And you do it and it happens and it updates in here as well. Amazing. And the funny thing is you have also tutorials. You have tutorials. I don't know if these are videos or being uh, rendered in real time. I guess they are videos, but if you hover, you can learn how to do more cool stuff in Paranormal. For example, auto containers. You can drag effects from a browser to target effects and it automatically takes them into a new encoder. And boom, you can also swap effects. So yeah, this is a cooler version of Ria Spaghetti and it reminds me of my beloved uh, modular bespoke synth. So the fact that we have a modular interface in Reaper where you can just put your serial and parallel any way you want it, dry and wet. But uh, yeah, I'm guessing that Reaper 7 still has a lot of stuff that I haven't discovered yet. The only thing I have seen so far is that now the track channel has, uh, count has been bumped from 64 to 128. I, I read this in the forums. And if you're interested, you can go to the uh, pre-release uh, sub-forum of the Cocos forum, and you can see the other stuff that uh, they've been adding to the release candidates. So yeah, pretty exciting stuff, right? Absolutely. Just this container thing is worth mm -hmm. upgrading to Reaper 7, in my opinion. Yep. Now let's go back to our head scratcher, the tractor gear system. Oh, you wanna you wanna start there? I thought that we could backtrack and work our way up to it, but okay. So yeah, I'll share with just put put those in random. Yeah, <laughs> no, I guess I had one idea that is related to what we did last time, but mm -hmm. we can work mm -hmm. from scratch up to that idea that we had last time and then go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Oh, hang on. Is this the problem that we st that we were working on last time? Yes, this the tractor gear system does the one. Ah, okay. I so checked the last stream. I guess we started with a sample and hold. Mm -hmm and a clock. Mm -hmm. I guess let's, uh, I don't remember what value of clock we needed. So let's just wire the output of the clock into output one and 
try and find, because we had a clock that was, I guess, twice as fast as what we needed. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like four. Mm. Mm. No. Yeah, it's offsetting. Nope. Yeah, we need to stabilize it. We need to, no, to have exactly... No, it was, it was four. Try four again. Let's look at that. Okay. Yeah, see how now the clock is lining with the wave underneath? Every time that mm -hmm. the clock yeah. rises, we want to switch. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every time that the clock rises, we want to flip output one. And my mm -hmm. idea for doing that was to um, have like a sample and hold and have a not gauge and feed the output of the not back into the sample and hold. And the problem with that was it was complaining about an infinite cycle. Am I remembering mm. this right? So the output of the clock would go into the yeah. gauge of the sample and hold. Oh, the output of the clock on the gate, okay. And then the output of the sample and hold would be the input to the notch, but also the input, the, it would also be output one. So I guess we need a splitter there. Oh, okay. So we split it in two, and the first one goes in here, and the second one goes in here. Yes, and then the output of the notch is the input of the sample and hold. Oh yeah. And that will uh, that will be an infinite cycle. Oops. Yes. Yes, it is. Now my idea for fixing the infinite cycle was to put another sample and hold in between as a buffer. Mm. Mm. So we place it in here. Oops. Should I disconnect this? Yeah, I'm trying to make sense of how we would wire this. Because my thought is a sample and hold would break an infinite cycle. That's what I hope for anyway. It can serve as a buffer. Mm. But mm -hmm. I don't know how to wire this actually. I guess let's work from the first simple and hold. So the first simple and hold would go into Oops. the notch. First mm -hmm. okay. And then the output of the notch would go into the second sample and hold as an input. Mm -hmm. And then the output of the second sample and hold goes as the input of the first sample and hold in the hopes that a sample and hold works as a buffer. And then we have to rewire mm -hmm. the... Hang on, what do we have there? Do we... It is... What is the output of the sample and hold? Is it connecting to anything? The, yeah, the, the input first. of the first one. And this is in the not. Ah, okay. Can we split it again? The output of the first okay. sample and hold split. This, the result of the split goes into the notch. And the output of mm -hmm. the notch goes into the second sample and hold. And the output of the second sample and hold goes into the first. Great. Now the only thing missing is the gauge. And for the gauge, mm -hmm. I guess we use the same clock. So split the signal mm -hmm. from the clock and, and put it on an, another gauge. I feel like I'm just making the problem worse, but that was my idea. <laughs> that maybe a buffer would get rid of the infinite loop. Oh, no, it doesn't. Ah, that's too bad. So, <laughs> yeah. Mm. That was my idea, and it doesn't seem to work. So I guess the best strategy is to backtrack, go to a previous stage, and continue from where we left off. Because I remember that we were playing and playing and playing, and then the last time we didn't know where we stopped, so we just got a random 
challenge and mm. it appears to be more than we can choose. So do you remember where we stopped and we can resume from there? No, I forgot. <laughs> but uh, we can start over if you want. Not from not from the beginning, you mean start restart the whole game? No, no, I mean the, this problem. Oh, no, this problem, I don't have any ideas, do you? No, I don't. You mean uh, go to a different state? Yeah. Do you remember okay, that last time go. we... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I, now I got what you were talking about, okay? Yeah. Sorry, I got a bit confused there, but yes. We can go back to the main, uh, the main problems. And do you remember where we left off? Yes, we did. I, I do. Okay. It was uh, after. Yeah, we did fix the irrigation distribution. We did. I think we we stopped here in the irrigation controller. Okay. So oh. let's go there. Oh no, we did this already. So then let's go to the next one. Uh -huh. uh, I guess it's the radio broadcast system. Mm -hmm. uh, when was oh, the, the letters are too small? Uh, for, oh, 17th October 2021, 3? No. That's weird. Anyway, let's load this up. Maybe we can do it even better if we've done it before. <laughs> oh, no, we fixed it. Anyway, 7 quit. Oh God, I turned off the game. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what is happening there? Do you have like for each stage you can save multiple answers? Yeah. Mm. It's, it, I think it also has an auto save. And there is, like I said, in, on their Discord, people are sharing their alternative solutions because every stage can have multiple ways of solving it. Do you often um, go to the I'm forums and read the... all the solutions and find something interesting and clever? Yeah. Mm. Actually, Sorry, can we guys, go to... I go to sleep. All right. Yeah, okay. thanks for joining us, Siewitz. Thank you. Bye, Siewitz. Thank you for the stream. Have a nice couple of weeks. You too. You too. You too. <laughs> nice talking. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Take care. You know what? Let's go to. Now the, that was the last time we figured out how the some the clocks were working. And well, then we did we, the buffers, so we saw we, probably... we saw the clock when we jumped into a, a problem way ahead, a problem that was way more advanced oh. than we knew how to do. So the idea is exactly okay. to backtrack and, and relearn how to do tricks with the clock, because what we want is, I guess, a clock divider. Okay, so let's go here. But did we do this the radio broadcast system? Did divider. we do the previous ones? I'm trying to pick up from where we left off. Yeah, the radio broadcast, yes. Okay, source so, one. Yeah, we don't is... have a clock here. We have VC. Okay, but let's random do signal. this. Source one is a random signal. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Huh? Did you say something? No, no, no. Okay. Please go on. Uh, source 1 is a random signal with occasional vo voltage spikes. Voltage spikes are always at least 75 volts. Source 1 to out send source 1 to out 1, but with the vo voltage spikes filtered out. 
at timestamps with voltage spikes send zero volts instead. So yeah, we have like minus four or five, and, and then boom, it goes 92. And here it goes, mm. boom, 76. It looks like a sample and hold, actually. I mean, the way I do sample and holds, which is not the way regular people do. <laughs> anyway. Uh, what do we have our, at our disposal? We have VCA, VCA bias, bias, attenuator. Ooh, we have not seen mm -hmm. an attenuator before. Takes an input and reduces it. Uh, its intensity. It reduces its intensity in, in virtual both. We both. have used it in one of the first ones. Ah, you can do, okay, that is just multiplication. This one is reducing. Yeah, this is reducing the signal. Mm. And this is amplifying. Yeah, that's not what you want. So moving on, do we have any new modules? Mm -hmm. No, just the end or not. Oh, and the min and max. Oh, uh, there but you these go. are optional modules. Ah, so they mm, they can you be used. You don't have to use those. But you don't have to use them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Well, how do they work? <laughs> Since mm -hmm. we have them, compare the to max, inputs so and you gives... compare the output the lower of the two. So you feed the two values on the in and the in one and in two, and it gives you the lower outputs in one or whichever is smaller. Mm. Uh... Should we take a look at the hints? Maybe. May, um, do you have an AGS? No. <laughs> Let's go. Observe the source signals. Observe the source signals. Carefully. Note the numerical difference between the clean signals and the voltage spikes. The numerical difference. Whew. What do they even mean by this? Let's go one more. If you subtract the voltage spike threshold of 75 volts from the current signal value, clean signals will become negative and voltage spikes remain positive. Let's try it. Mm. So you're trying to bias the signal? With the attenuator. Yes. Yeah, the bias. And let's get rid of this. Hmm. Well, we got as exactly. far as the wind, the, the hint went. Mm -hmm. So now we could take the minimum between the signal and zero. Uh -huh. No, that will not do a, any good. Well, it will shave off the spikes. The spikes. Hmm. Hmm. I don't. I I think of a solution, but it's convoluted. We could use mm -hmm. something like one of the binary ports, like the AND and OR and stuff. Mm -hmm. With a VCA. Or we can use another hint. We could use that along with a VCA and multiply the waveform by zero when the thing goes over, but it's complicated. It doesn't seem like it is the solution that they want us mm. to get at. You can use a VCA. Oh, that's the final hint. You can use a VCA as a gate. Yeah, they are. Mm perhaps going for what I was thinking about. Mm. Um, so yeah, you can use the VCA without an input. 
Yeah. Uh, no, the input is going to be the source. And the output is going mm -hmm. to be what we output to the end of the the system. No, 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 no. I, I'm thinking of take source one, split it, send half of it to b the bias, half of it to the VCA. Oops, okay, I'm um, sorry, boom. So we split it, half of it to the bias, half of it to the VCA. And then the output of the VCA is going to be the output of the system. Okay. Now, that is just going to zero everything out. We need a CV. The CV, mm -hmm. we want the CV to be zero when there are spikes and one mm -hmm. when there are no spikes. So I guess we use a not gauge. Oh. So we take the output of the bias, pass it through the not gauge, mm -hmm. and the output of the not goes into the CV. That is the convoluted idea that I was talking about. Oh, we fixed it. Yep, they wanted us to do the convoluted Good thing. Good job, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Let's see how top we are in the world. How is the leaderboard oh, determined? Too, too slow. Uh, it, oh, OK. So we are uh, fourth, fifth hundred, fifth thousand in the world, apparently. The top ones get 18,000 points and we got 17,000. You can improve your score by using fewer modules or cables or by reducing the length of the cables through proper organization. But anyway, ah, okay. we thought that's what the one yeah. is. Let's not worry that's too much about making cables rights. tidy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, science is messy. Deal with it. So we just did the, uh, which was it? The radio broadcast system, right? Yes. Uh, I now think... let's go to the clocks. Yes, that was. Okay, so radio One clocking because... systems? Yes. Now let's use the clocks for the first time, like we should have. <laughs> yeah. And I swear to God, every anybody who plays the song clocks by Coldplay is getting shadow banned. <laughs> so output one, two, and three receive clock signals. Oh, okay. So this is very simple. Mm. Um, all you do is just create three clocks and you input them and you just change the values. You just have to change them. So the first is correct because it needs two. The second needs four. No, no. no you, needs you are three. saying things and pointing, yes. but you are pointing at the wrong clock. You wired. The, the, mm -hmm. the, the clock on the left is the third clock, not the first clock. No, you're changing the wrong one. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Look at the wires. Oops, yes, you're right. Oh, yeah, the third one is in the one output. Oops, yes, you're right. So output three. Let's go back into the beginning. So this is clock one output one. This is clock two output two. Boom. Okay, only the the last one is wrong. Uh, is it? Ah. Oh yeah, it is also two, but we need to invert it. We need to invert it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need a knot. There we go. So they wanted to teach us that we can invert the clock 
which can come in handy in the problem that we are working toward because the mm. two sample and holds that we had they were triggered by the same clock they could mm -hmm. be triggered by the invert mm. of the clock and that may solve the mm. infinite loop because we are not triggering both sample and holds at the same time do you have that can you mm -hmm. go back to the solution that we were working toward do you can you pull it back up or would you have to recreate it from scratch uh no it wasn't saved oh no no yeah no it wasn't saved we didn't save it but we can go solve another clock problem yeah let's go step by step the, and get there at some point yeah. the radio memory buffer so let's see if i remember this one uh, can we solve this and the next one and then uh work on the original problem next time yeah yeah yeah. i think that we can okay. we can do this and wrap it up so mm. output one okay. receives memory buffered signal oh memory buffers that's what we need to solve the loop huh. they're they are gonna teach us awesome so receives memory buffered signals from source one at regular intervals the memory buffered signal is updated to the latest signal from SERS1. Okay, so it wants us to use SERS1 into a, an input of the sample and hold, a clock into the gate of the sample and hold, and the output of the sample and hold goes into the output of the system. So they are teaching us how to use a sample and hold as a memory buffer. Uh -huh. So you said... Uh, SERS goes into the input again? of sample and hold. Yeah. The clock goes to the gauge and the output goes to the output. And now it's a matter of fine tuning the clock. Or not even that.